This, my friends, is a tech tip for all of you out there who are still running mechanical hard drives. I mean, not everyone has the budget to run eight SSDs in RAID 0, so for those of you out there with one of these in your system, we are going to take this mechanical drive and teach it a new trick to squeeze a little bit more performance out of it. It's called, good job little Skippy, please do a little better. That's not actually the trick, there's a real trick that has some basis in reality. I mean, SSDs are really amazing. They have these tiny little drives that have these quick transfer speeds and super fast access times. Mechanical drives, on the other hand, are physically limited to a mechanical arm floating over a spinning platter to pick up the data and lay it down, if you know what I'm talking about. And the drive has an upper limit to how fast it can spin without going over, you know, power limits or, well, heat limits as much as anything else because of friction. And so all they can really do is go full speed and the inner tracks will provide slower read speeds than the outer tracks no matter what you do because of the shape of a hard drive. Because it all spins at the same speed but because it's a circle the outside is effectively moving much faster and so the read and write head is able to work faster on that part of the drive. So we can take advantage of this and utilize the only the better performing portion of the drive by Short stroking it. Little Skippy, you give it a little short stroke. No, okay. Essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to investigate which portion of the drive performs the best and take advantage of that barrier by letting Windows talk to either the faster or slower portions separately. Keep in mind that this will work for any mechanical drive. In fact, the Tech Tips crew here use an SSHD for their benchmark drive simply because games are becoming massive and having several games and benchmark tools on an SSD isn't really feasible yet, so they've got a 4 terabyte SSHD from Seagate, which also benefited from short stroking. So step one, finding the sweet spot. Theoretically, the smaller you make the fast portion, the faster it will perform. But you don't want to be using a 50 gig drive that you just paid, you know, however much money for, 75 bucks for, because then you could have just bought an SSD for that amount. So essentially, we want to find out where the transfer rates really drop off. So for this, we used HD Tune, which has a free demo, and all you got to do is run the benchmark tool and have a look at the results. So the maximum transfer speed of this drive is 139. 9.9 megabytes per second and the minimum is 61.6 megabytes per second with an average of 105.8. The transfer speeds seem to drop off right around the 225 gig mark so we wanted to capture as much of the good transfer speeds before it dips to around 113 megabytes per second as we could. So the next thing to do is partition the drive around that mark. A quick Google conversion tells us that in megabytes, 225 gigs means around 230,400 megabytes. So the next thing we do is enter the disk management tool, wipe out the old large partition and create two new ones. The first one is going to be 230,400 megabytes, which will be our fast partition and the rest is our slow partition. So let's benchmark the new short stroked partition. The new speeds are a max of 139.9 megabytes per second. Duh, which makes sense. We didn't make it faster. But the minimum is 114.6 megabytes per second and an average of 128.2 megabytes per second. So comparing those to the original numbers, you're looking at the same max speed, but the minimum speeds are twice that of the full drive. Now, let's say your slow partition is empty. The performance will be similar to the fast partition. However, as it fills up, you could be getting up to a 50% reduction in transfer rates. So in our case, short stroking ensures that anything we store on the fast partition will all always read at a minimum of 114.6 megabytes per second, whereas the slow partition could be anywhere from that fast all the way down to as slow as 61.6 megabytes per second. One final tip for doing this though is that keep in mind that while your two drives in the OS are visible separately, they still exist on the same drive. So if you have the operating system, you know, installed on the short stroked one, but then you put a bunch of other programs and stuff on the slow one, then you are still going 
going to slow down your access times because having the mechanical arm flip back and forth between the slow and fast partitions will slow you down. So while it might be tempting to use the, the fast partition for this and the slow partition for that, you may be actually negating a lot of the benefit of short stroking in the first place. So at the end of the day, this is not a replacement for an SSD. You're only going to want to use that slow partition for like super infrequently used things and in an ideal world nothing at all. But what it is, is it is a quick in between. If you're not ready to invest in an SSD yet, you're willing to sacrifice a little bit of your capacity, although again not quite as much, especially from a uh, performance per dollar and capacity per dollar perspective, but you want to get a little bit more juice out of your hard drive. Okay, so you can't, you can't juice a hard drive. But I think you guys see my point. Good job, little Skippy. Thanks for watching this episode of NCIX Tech Tips. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX.com.